Hi, I'm Lisa. I'd like to teach you some more English expressions that native speakers use all the time. Let's continue listening to native speakers in Los Angeles. I believe that this is one of the most effective ways for you to improve your English and to reach that true level of fluency, that final step of fluency. Native speakers of English use so many different expressions when they talk. For example, do you know the expression, I fend for myself? For example, someone might say, from a young age, I learned to fend for myself. A non-native speaker might say, I learned to take care of myself. But you will hear Michael in this video and he will use the expression to fend for myself. Learned how to fend for myself. And Michael said that he sold his RV. Do you know what an RV is? Yeah, so I sold my car, my RV, and I'm, it's just me and my bike. I would like to help you understand native speakers all the time, whether you're watching an American film or whether you're communicating in English at the workplace or with your American friends. I recommend that after I teach you an expression, you pause the video and you make your own sentence related to your own life and say the sentence aloud. It's a good way to practice when you actually hear yourself saying the sentence. You will listen to my conversation with Michael. Michael is a musician and he had various businesses over the years. And he came to Los Angeles for creative reasons. He believes anything is possible. He believes that if you're really determined and if you work hard and if you have the right attitude, you can achieve your dreams. I think he will inspire you. Let's watch the first part of my conversation with Michael. He talks about why he left New York and why he went to Colorado and finally why he moved to Los Angeles. And after you watch the video, I will come back and I will teach you the expressions that he used and I will give you other sample sentences using those expressions so that you will learn to use them in different contexts. So I just made a power move with a couple thousand dollars in my pocket bought a beat up minivan and just drove to the mountains um, just to try something new. When I got there, again, started from scratch, learned how to fend for myself and how to fail forward, not fail and freak out. It comes from trial and error and that is where my fear kind of diminished and I was able to, to depend on something higher, me being connected to something higher and that's where the confidence really, really lies. And I said, I can do pretty much anything and, and when I say I, I don't mean me in particular. I think I as in you, as in everybody. We all have the ability to do anything we really put our minds to. And I believe that so wholeheartedly. And that is why I think when you connect that idea with a place like Los Angeles, where all the opportunity lies, that's where magic can really happen. And that's what really led me here. Living in Colorado was beautiful naturally. The mountains, the rivers, everything was amazing. However, as far as opportunity, for a creative, it, it's lacking out there. You know, it's more of a place you want to go and settle when you're a little older, buy a home, and just hang out and chill. But LA's where if you want to keep it moving, keep keep going, keep grinding, that, that's where it's at. There's just so much out here for that. I'm I'm interested in the experience of life, you know. I read somewhere that the, the average human being only gets to experience 10% of what there is to experience in general on Earth. So what I, mean, like, like, give me an example. So there's infinite experiences you can have, right? They say you're, the average human being can only, your capacity in your lifetime, you can only fill up about 10% of what there is out there to experience. So if that's true, I wanna make sure that my 10% is awesome. So I'm all about taking risks, trying new things, meeting new people, moving to new places that I don't, I've never been before and indulging in that culture and, um, starting from scratch and, and building my way up. I'm all for a new challenge, you know? So you don't mind starting from scratch? No, I love it. It's not scary for you? No, no. I've gotten over the fear really early, you know, um, with a lot of trial and error and failing, ups and downs and an entrepreneurial kind of path. Um, so you've learned that if you're down, you can get back up. Absolutely. Down is just a learning experience, you know? There's so much to take from, from the down so that the next time you're up, you can get up a little higher than you were in the past. Let's listen to the way Michael used the expression power move. So I just made a power move with a couple thousand dollars in my pocket. Michael said that he made a power move 
With just a couple thousand dollars in his pocket, he moved to Colorado. A power move is an important decision or action that has a big impact. An aggressive decision that shows confidence and strength. Here's an example sentence. In what may be the power move of all power moves, Michael Jackson kicked off his 1993 halftime show at the Rose Bowl by literally just standing on stage doing absolutely nothing for about two minutes. And you probably know that we can say a couple of when we mean two or approximately two. So I just made a power move with a couple thousand dollars in my pocket. We can say, can I ask you a couple of questions? Or this will only take a couple of minutes, just a few minutes. Listen to the way Michael used the expression beat up. He said beat up minivan. Bought a beat up minivan and just drove to the mountains. This is a minivan and a beat up minivan is an old car that is damaged or is in bad condition. And you can say, I bought a beat up old car that only cost a couple of thousand dollars. And some of you may be wondering why did I not put an S for costs? Why not the car costs? Because this is in the past tense. We don't say costed, it's an irregular verb. That's why there is no S at the end of cost. It's in the past tense. The next expression is to start from scratch. Let's listen to the way Michael used it. Um, just to try something new. When I got there, again, started from scratch. Do you remember this expression when Ashley used it? I interviewed Ashley about one year ago and I taught you the expression to start from scratch. So we might as well just start from scratch. And that means to start from the beginning, to start from nothing. You can say, this project isn't working. Let's start from scratch. When they moved to the US, they left everything behind and they started from scratch. They came to the US with nothing. They had no house or no job or no friends. They started from scratch. The next expression Michael used is to fend for myself. Let's listen. Learned how to fend for myself. If you fend for yourself, that means you take care of yourself without any help, without anyone's support. When his parents died, he had to fend for himself. My parents are paying for my health insurance, but otherwise I have to fend for myself. The next expression is a slang expression, to freak out. Let's listen to Michael. Not fail and freak out. If you freak out, you panic, you get scared, or you have a strong emotional response. You're shocked and you lose control of yourself. Usually it's bad, but sometimes it can be good. When I heard the news, I freaked out. He freaked out and started screaming at everybody. When I saw my favorite actor, I started freaking out. Michael said that he learned to fail and not freak out. He's not worried about failure because he trusts that everything will be okay if he continues to be positive and work hard. Let's go on to the next expression. This is a good one, trial and error. Let's listen to how Michael used it. It comes from trial and error and that is where my fear kind of diminished. When you do things by trial and error, you try to find the best way to solve a problem by trying different methods. You learn from your mistakes and you keep improving. You can say, how did you become such a good photographer? Just by trial and error, I learned by myself, nobody else taught me. Have you learned anything by trial and error? Let's go on to the next expression. It's the expression, pretty much. Let's listen to how Michael used it. And I said, I can do pretty much anything. Michael said, and I can pretty much do anything. Pretty much means almost, nearly. You can say, are you finished? Pretty much. How are these two cars different? They're pretty much the same. Let's listen to how some other people used pretty much. And then I thought I pretty much said everything I needed to say. It ends up being pretty much the same thing. Let's listen to the way Michael used the expression to put one's mind to. He said to put our minds to. We all have the ability to do anything we really put our minds to. And I believe that so wholeheartedly. Michael said we have the ability to do pretty much anything that we put our minds to. And if you put your mind to something, it means that you will decide to do something and you will try very hard to achieve it. You put a lot of effort in achieving your goal. You can say to put your mind to or to set your mind to. 
And I know that you can improve your English if you put your mind to it. Let's look at the next word. This is a great word. I'd like you to learn this one. Wholeheartedly. Let's listen to the way Michael used it. We all have the ability to do anything we really put our minds to, and I believe that so wholeheartedly. Michael said that we can do anything we want to if we put our minds to it, and he believes that wholeheartedly. Let's look at the pronunciation of this word first. Let's look at the word heart. When we add the ed, we say hearted, hearted, heartedly, wholeheartedly. Let's say that again, wholeheartedly. And that means without any hesitation, completely with my whole heart. You can say, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Let's listen to the way some other people used it. I believed I knew wholeheartedly what was good. And I wholeheartedly agree with him. Let's listen to the way he used the verb to lead. He used it in the past tense and he said led. Let's listen. When you connect that idea with a place like Los Angeles where all the opportunity lies, that's where magic can really happen. And that's what really led me here. He said, that's what led me to come here. So we have lead, led, led. And that means that's what motivated me to come here. When you ask someone a question, instead of saying, why did you come here? You can say, what led you here? Or you can also say, what brought you here? Same meaning. In the next clip that you will watch, Michael talks about riding a motorcycle in Los Angeles compared to riding a motorcycle in New York. He uses a lot of interesting expressions related to transportation that I would like to teach you. Let's watch the clip and then I will come back and I will teach you the expressions. All right, here's Michael on his motorcycle. You get around in LA on a motorcycle? Yeah, so I sold my car, my RV, and I'm, it's just me and my bike. Very wow. minimalist motorcycle. Do you love it? I love it, it's great. The freedom on a bike is like none other. Really? And what's great about LA versus the East Coast in New York is people actually get out of your way and they're very aware of motorcycles on the road because it's actually legal to split in between the lanes on you. Where in New York, people might want to bump you and there's a lot of road rage out there. Oh, really? Yeah, here it's a little bit more accepting. So it's a little safer as well. And uh, the weather's nice. And the weather. You can't go anywhere else and ride a motorcycle all year long. So I love it. It's great. Let's listen to the way I use to get around. Get around in LA on a motorcycle? I asked Michael, do you get around in LA on a motorcycle? To get around means to travel, to move from place to place, to go to different places. You can say, in this city, it's very difficult to get around if you don't have a car. Do you know what an RV is? Let's listen to the way Michael used it. Yeah, so I sold my car, my RV, and I'm, it's just me and my bike. Michael said, I sold my car and my RV. An RV is a recreational vehicle. It's also called a camper or a motor home. You can live in it, or when you take a vacation, you can sometimes rent it and you can travel to different places and you sleep in it. You can say, we rented an RV and we traveled all over the United States. He said, it's just me and my bike. Now, bike has a couple of different meanings. It can mean either a bicycle or a motorcycle. It's just me and my bike. So if someone says, I bought a bike, maybe they bought a bicycle or maybe they bought a motorcycle. Let's go on to the next expression. Michael said, like none other. Freedom on a bike is like none other. Michael said, the freedom on a bike is like none other. It's very special. It's unique. Nothing else compares to it. You can say, that performance was like none other. You can also use it in a negative way. You can say something like this, because of the pandemic, the year 2020 was like none other. It was very unique. It was very different. You might know the expression to get out of someone's way. Let's listen to the way Michael said it. He said, get out of your way. Great about LA versus the East Coast in New York is people actually get out of your way. Michael said when he's riding his motorcycle in LA, people get out of your way. To get out of your way means to move out of your path, to move to the side when you're blocking someone, when you're blocking someone's path. So you can say, 
Am I in your way? I'm sorry, I will get out of your way. Can you please get out of the way? I can't see the TV screen. And Michael told me riding a motorcycle in New York is very different from riding a motorcycle in Los Angeles. The cars get out of your way in Los Angeles. Listen to the way Michael used the word lane and make sure you don't confuse it with the word line. That's a common mistake. I'm very aware of motorcycles on the road because it's actually legal to split in between the lanes. On the Michael said that it's legal to split between lanes in Los Angeles. And this is a lane. On the highway, you have different lanes. Sometimes you have one lane and sometimes you have three or four lanes. Don't confuse the word lane with the word line. This is a line and this is a lane. You can say there's a line between the lanes. In Los Angeles, the freeways sometimes have five lanes going in one direction. I turn on my blinker before I change lanes. Let's listen to the way Michael used the expression to bump into. We're in New York, people might want to bump you and there's a lot of road rage out there. Michael said that people in New York might want to bump into motorcycles. To bump into is to hit something very lightly. For example, when one car hits another car just a little bit, that is to bump into. And Michael said in New York, the drivers sometimes like to bump into motorcycles. That sounds pretty dangerous to me. Let's listen to the way Michael used the expression road rage. There's a lot of road rage out there. Michael said that there's a lot of road rage in New York. Do you know what road rage means? Do you know what rage means? Rage means a lot of anger. If someone is very angry, they have a lot of rage. So road rage is anger between drivers. Sometimes they yell or they honk their horn or they make gestures with their hands, but occasionally it gets more violent than that and they do something that could be dangerous. And that angry behavior on the road is called road rage. There's a lot more road rage in big cities compared to small towns. Michael says that Los Angeles has less road rage than New York. And the final expression is all year long. Let's listen to Michael. And the weather, you can't go anywhere else and ride a motorcycle all year long. So I love it, it's great. Michael says that he really likes Los Angeles. And he says you can't go anywhere else where you can ride a motorcycle all year long. And all year long means continuously without stopping for the entire year. You could also say all day long. I worked all day long yesterday. I've been studying for the test all week long. I recommend that you practice these expressions and make your own sentences. And I will keep making similar videos. I have other interviews coming soon. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell so that you get a notification when a new video comes. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course, and the 400 advanced words you must know for fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.